Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our first example of how to use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve a non-homogeneous second-order differential equation. Of course, it does have constant coefficients, so we do the easy type differential equation first. We know that the solution is going to be the sum of the homogeneous part of the solution plus the, plus the particular solution. So what we're going to do first is find the homogeneous part first which means we're going to take this equation and turn it into a homogeneous second order equation simply by setting this equal to zero. So we have y double prime minus 5y prime plus 4y equals zero. That is the homogeneous equation, so we'll call that the homogeneous equation. And now we find the characteristic equation to solve that. Characteristic equation can be written as r squared minus 5 times r plus 4 equal to 0. And that's easy to solve. We can factor that. So this will look as follows. r minus 4 times r minus 1 equals 0, which means that the first root, r1, is equal to 4, and the second root, r2, is equal to positive 1. We can then write down the homogeneous part of the solution. y homogeneous is equal to c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the 1t, or simply t. So this is the homogeneous part of the solution. Now all we have left to do is find the particular solution. Now we take a look at what this looks like. This is that g of t, and g of t is an exponential function, which means that the particular solution will take on this form some constant, call it a, times e to the 3t. Now before we proceed, we need to make sure that this exponent is not over here. Notice we don't have a 3t here, because if we do, we have to use a different method, an augmented approach, and we'll show you how to use that later. But here we realize that this e to the 3t does not appear here in the homogeneous solution, so therefore we can go ahead and proceed with this technique. We now find the first and second derivative of the particular solution, and we'll then plug that back in the original equation so we can determine the undetermined coefficient. So y p prime is going to be equal to e to the 3t times 3, or 3 a times e to the 3t, and the second derivative, y p double prime, is going to be 9 a e to the 3 t. Again, it's e to the 3 t times the derivative of the exponent times 3, so we have 3 times 3, which gives us 9. We can now plug that into our original equation. So when we come down here, we can now say that y double prime, which is 9 a e to the 3 t, minus 5 times y prime, which is 3 a e to the 3 t, and then we have plus 4 times y, plus 4 times a times e to the 3t, and that equals the right side equation, which is e to the 3t. And now notice this linear equation, we can solve that for a. Factoring out e to the 3t from e to the 3 terms will give us the following. We get 9 times a, minus 5 times 3, which is minus 15a, plus 4a, all multiplied times e to the 3t. And that should equal the right side equation, which is e to the 3t, which means that what's inside the parentheses here must equal the coefficient here, which is 1. So we get 9a plus 4a, which is 13a, minus 15a, that's minus 2a, equals the coefficient on the right side, which is 1, or a equals negative one-half. We have now determined that undetermined coefficient, which means we cannot conclude, therefore, that the particular solution is equal to this, but a now equal to minus one-half. So it's minus one-half times e to the 3t. And since the solution to the original non-homogeneous differential equation is simply the sum of the homogeneous part of the solution plus the particular solution, we can say that this is therefore equal to this, which is c1 e to the 4t plus c2 e to the t 
plus a particular solution, which is minus 1 half e to the 3t. And this then becomes the complete solution of the differential equation, the non-homogeneous differential equation. So you can see that method is pretty convenient, and it's really not that hard to find the coefficients using that technique. And that's how it's done.